Hello, today my name is Brian Parman. Uh, I'm the Ag Finance Specialist for North Dakota State University um, Extension Service. Um, and today I want to talk to you about backgrounding cattle and do a little bit of a budget and analysis for uh, feeding cattle, holding back weaned calves and feeding and finishing them out yourself. I think we have a bit of a opportunity this year for that to pay perhaps more so than it has in the past for a couple of reasons. Number one being we have a fairly unique scenario this year with uh, a late crop getting into the field due to wet weather, then continued wet weather into the fall, one of the wettest on record, um, causing dry down issues, quality issues with wheat, and then of course a freeze up making it difficult to get that crop out of the ground and, and get everything harvested. And you couple that with, for the most part, quite a bit of grass availability during the during the year due to the, the wetter weather that we've had. And decent hay crops in other areas, not necessarily just North Dakota, but um, just speaking regionally in general, um, a decent year for hay uh, as far as that goes. So what I wanted to talk to you about and go through some scenarios is the net returns or the returns to labor and management for feeding cattle out, feeding calves, uh, retaining some of those weaned calves, putting weight on them and selling them into the future. Um, and again, like I said, we've had disease due to the wet weather, low falling numbers with wheat and huge discounts. And in some cases, you know, elevators don't even want it when the falling numbers get low enough. And so what do you do with it? Well, there's still some value in it, at least as far as an animal feed goes. Uh, that's the same thing with frost damaged crops or you know, wet corn, um, those kind of things. What can you do with them? Well, they're still valuable as an animal feed and we, we have a year where that's, that's coming into play. And then of course, hay stocks. We've had some dry spots in North Dakota. That notwithstanding, it's been a decent grass year for the most part in the region and especially into the plains south of us. So that hasn't been an issue at all. And uh, uh, so this perhaps provides an opportunity for, for us to really think about um, a, a cattle retaining those weaned calves and putting some of the weight on them uh, ourselves. And one of the other things to go along with that is there's kind of some distress or fear that this year might have a short corn crop and we won't really know the extent of that until places like North Dakota that still has a lot of corn left out there really knows what the yield is until we actually get it harvested. A, a short crop is expected. How short it's, it remains to be seen but one of the things that's done is depressed calf prices in the fall of 2019 compared to 2018. Not only that, but the fire down at the packing plant in Kansas has de depressed some prices. And so when you look at the price slides uh, this year versus years past, um, cattle feeders are, are willing to pay for somebody who's putting weight, put weight on their animals this time. And so we're going to kind of go through some, some opportunities there. So here's the price assumptions and the cost assumptions that we're uh, using in this analysis. With these uh, you see here are price of uh, hay, grass hay versus alfalfa hay, corn silage, grain, DDGs, limestone, salt, and vitamins. We're going to operate under a yardage assumption of 35 cents a day, interest at five and a half percent, and these marketing and vet med costs are in dollars per head with a uh, trucking cost at. 75 cents per hundred weight plus a three percent shrink and a one percent uh, death loss assumption so these assumptions i'm showing here until i say otherwise are what we're going to use moving forwards now as far as the market prices for the weaned calf that you retain which would be viewed as either an opportunity cost in the sense that you could have sold that calf for a certain price therefore you should charge yourself that price for having not sold it as if you'd bought it from yourself essentially. And this is showing steers in North Dakota uh, all the way from you know lightweight all the way up to about 150, uh, 850 weight animals. Okay and this is where I'm getting my prices from for both the weaned calf and then the future uh, sold heavier weight calf. And this is the same this just shows the same thing but for heifers. Um, obviously heifers are worth a little bit less per hundred weight typically and this reflects that and this is as of uh, current as of Friday December 13th so these are the prices I'll be using uh, going forward again as we go through these scenarios that I'm uh, that I'm about to talk about here 
So we're going to run six different scenarios in this case. Uh, three for steers and three for heifers. And there are, with the steers, there's three different average daily gains. Okay, 1.8, 2.8, and 3.6. So the assumption is we hold them until we achieve this uh, uh, final weight that we anticipate selling them from. Going from 5 to 800 weight, 5 and a quarter to 805, and then 575 all the way out to uh, 1270. Okay. And then heifers, we have uh, two scenarios where we're going to run 1.8 pound average daily rate of gain. And the first scenario is going to be a lighter weight heifer up to 750, a heavier 550 weight heifer up to 850, so the upper end of the replacement quality. And then a 2.8 pound average daily gain from five and a quarter up to 805 pounds. So similar finishing weights in the heifers, just different rates of gain and, and different um, starting weaned weights. Scenarios. Now scenario one uh, is um, 450 pounds up to 756 pounds. That gives us an average daily gain of 1.8 pounds. All right, and uh, or uh, uh, days on feed of 170 days at an average daily gain of 1.8 pounds. So our market weight is 756. So the beginning value of a heifer of 450 pounds is $140 per hundredweight, and the projected sales price of almost $129 per hundredweight. So here's the ration on the right. You can see the table on the right shows a ration to achieve this daily rate of gain with the heifers. That's a, a, one of the options using grass hay, corn silage, and some DDGs mainly. And again, you'll see our yardage fee of uh, $0.35 cents per per. Uh, day per head, our trucking fee stays the same. So in our first scenario, we have a net return uh, to labor and management of 90, almost $95 per head. So you could think of that as your wage. In other words, that you're paying yourself your revenues for, for actually maintaining this animal every day. The one thing that's, uh, and so that's a pretty, pretty decent profit you'll see there. Like I said, almost $95 per head under the assumptions that we're operating under here. And again, those feed, feed costs that I showed uh, several slides ago um, under this ration and assuming that 1.8 pound daily rate again all the way up to 756. All right. So scenario two, in this case, we still have that 1.8 pound daily gain, but we're starting at a weaning weight of 550 and feeding them out to almost 850 weight. This puts them on feed for 165 days, okay? And our projected selling price and beginning values, so our beginning value is lower and our projected sales price is close, but the ration has changed, uh, or the ration is uh, similar, slightly different. And we have basically the same, again, the same lot and yardage fees and everything else. This one, this scenario here, uh, it does not pay quite as much as the previous scenario did, but close at, at, at almost $88. So this is, you know, nearly $7 per head less. The biggest reason for that being that, you know, the days on feed are a, a little bit different and the ration has changed some. But those two scenarios are both very similar. You're essentially putting on the same amount of weight um, and uh, or close to the same amount of weight. And really the biggest difference there being in the price slide for, for those weight of animals, um, explaining most of it as far as that goes. So our third scenario in this case is five and a quarter weight heifers, although uh, to 805 pounds at a 2.8 pound daily rate of gain. So that's uh, one, one pound per day higher than our last two scenarios. This puts them on feed for less time, 100 days. And in this case, the ration changes quite a, a good bit. We're feeding more silage corn or uh, some silage corn, quite a bit of that, but we're also feeding corn for grain or uh, grain corn, which a bit more expensive um, using that. But at the same time, we can see our return quite a bit higher here. And again, what this is signifying, a lot of this comes from this, not just the ration that's being fed and the relative uh, cost of corn and these other things, but the price slide. If you go back and look, you know, 
these 800 weight animals are selling pretty high compared to you know 500 and a quarter to 550 weight animals and then the relatively cheap cost of feed as far as like silage and these other things well that's basically if you're able to achieve those prices and those costs in this rate again you can see that it uh, this hundred and fourteen dollars is quite a bit more um, than, than you know our last scenario which was in the 80s and the other part of that is the less time that they're in the lot uh, you you think about vet med costs and trucking in terms of dollars per day those are uh, those are lower uh, if an animal spends more time uh, or I, I should say less time being fed out because again this is ten dollars per head so when you think about about the cost per day these actually go down so our again our net returns to uh, labor management pretty pretty strong on this uh, high day, high rate of gain heifer scenario and a, a lot of that's because right now you know feed costs relative to the price of price of livestock is still pretty low now the market again on these on these heavier weight animals is is pretty strong not so not as strong on the lighter weight ones so we save some money on the opportunity cost and then make a little bit more money uh, on the back end due to the the higher value of 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 cattle heavier weight cattle okay. so our first scenario which is scenario four in this case but our first scenario as far as steers goes is taking a weaned 500 pound steer and feeding them up to 800 pounds now at a 1.8 pounds per day that gives us 167 days on feed which using this ration here with grass hay silage corn um, no no grain corn and some DDGs salt and minerals of 79 cents per day on feed costs we use the same yardage fees the same interest and the same death loss and shrink on the steer side we come out to in our first scenario putting 300 pounds on that animal over the course of 167 days at 48 dollars a head the biggest difference between <coughs> steers and heifers being that with steers our uh, beginning value is quite a bit higher than it is on the heifers so the slide uh, it goes back to that slide difference i talked about on steers the the uh, an 800 weight or a 900 weight steer compared to an 800 or 900 weight heifer in terms of dollars per hundred weight are a lot closer than it is versus a, a five and a 600 weight steers and heifers so there's not as big a, a premium put on on the steers at the heavier weight versus the lighter weight against heifers so we don't have as much uh, return it's still fairly strong at 48 dollars but at the same time you could see that feeding heifers out for that for that amount of days yields a higher higher return and a lot of that is in the cost of the animal when you when you first put them on feed but we can see in the next scenario um, where we're putting on a lot more weight the relatively low cost of feed our return on the steer gets gets a good bit higher at 7681 so in this scenario we're doing a 2.8 pounds average daily gain um, and they're only on feed in this case 100 days going from five and a quarter to 805 weight animals so for the most part our projected selling price and our beginning value stays relatively similar to the last scenario but they're on feed less for less time and we're using corn uh, for uh, grain corn in this case which is relatively inexpensive um, compared to the the value of the calf and as a result our return to labor and management on taking a steer from 525 to 805 at 2.8 pounds per day we get a we get a net return per head of almost 77 dollars which is which is again pretty strong this year now our final steer scenario is taking a five and 575 pound steer up to 1270 on a 3.6 pounds per day uh, gain so this animal would have to be on feed under that scenario for 193 days um, I took this selling price here of $120 per hundred weight uh, straight from the futures price not from the North Dakota values but from the futures price and that comes out to $120 per hundred weight but that beginning value of $165 per hundred weight and again our assumptions on everything else stays the same but our ration changes quite a bit we're going to feed a lot of, a lot more corn 
grain corn, uh, quite a bit of silage, very little hay relative to the overall ration, which comes out to $1.33 per head per day in terms of feed costs with our yardage again and everything staying the same. But if you look at our return to labor and management, that comes out to $162.43 per head. Now, one of the things with all of this uh, as I'm going through it is, of course, if, if putting on weight is less expensive, um, you know, and, and you're actually turning a profit by putting on this weight, it, it would make sense that heavier weight animals when you sell them is going to have a higher net return. So one of the things you might want to think about in this case is uh, here, and that's net returns per day. Okay, daily profits in dollars per head. Going back to like what I was saying before, our daily profits in dollars per head, you, you wonder, well, yes, if I sell a heavier animal and I'm making any amount of profit per day, the heavier it is, the more money I'm going to make. And, and what you see here, though, is that the actual daily profits per head goes up the heavier the animal or, or the uh, relatively shorter period of time that you put the weight on. Um, because that yardage fee is 35 cents per day, but it, what, what happens is the relative cost of feed that puts the weight on fast is relatively cheap right now. So doing these high daily gains of 2.8 in the case of the heifers and 3.6 in the case of steers, and even 2.8 in the case of steers relative to 1.8, those hotter rations that are putting on a lot more weight more quickly right now under our current prices, um, right now that's paying out more per day than it is feeding them on grass type hay or a you know, lower energy concentrated ration right now that the that the daily profits are a lot higher in the cases of a hotter ration than more of a more of a, a grass based ration if you will um, that the high protein high energy diets are really paying off based on again the futures prices as they are current calf prices and and feed prices uh, cash prices across the state and this sort of just breaks it out there if you want to think about um, the projected profits per head but one of the things about keeping animals on feed longer and then taking a gamble with higher feed costs is that there are some risk considerations that we have to take into account one of them being the final sales price of steers and heifers. You know, if prices of heifers or steers, you know, uh, if they were uh, the 850, 900 weight or whatever, if those prices continue to trend downward as these animals are on feed, you know, that's a risk you take the longer you keep them on there. So everything looks pretty good at, let's say, 75, 80 cents per, per pound per day. But again, that assumes that the prices that I'm projecting in these budgets wind up being the final prices that you see when the animals sold so the longer you hold them the more risk you take of prices falling but at the same time also the more risk you have of the the prices actually improving while you hold on to these animals so depending on which way you think it, the market's going you, you might see an improvement in terms of dollars per day gained or you, you might see a reduction then of course there's the feed cost risk Feed costs can change, the price of corn can change, and if you don't have all of it contracted for the life of the animal, which probably most people don't, then there's a chance that feed costs can go up. Again, we're assuming a constant feed cost, but those things fluctuate into the future just like anything else, and so there's a risk of holding on to the animals and worrying about feed costs increasing or probably possibly decreasing. And then our daily gain assumptions. This is a big assumption here too because suppose we have some really cold or nasty weather over the winter and we feed them as if we're trying to get 2.8 pounds per day and we don't because the weather is poor or we wind up with uh, some poor animal health due to wet weather in the spring or something like that and so we're where we have all these um, costs we're incurring but at the same time we aren't getting the benefit of the daily gains that we need so these are kind of the big three risks uh, going forward and I'll just kind of sh highlight exactly how those would impact the other so let's just take our scenario five which is 525 weight to 805 pound steers okay to uh, on our 2.8 pound assumption of uh, average daily gain so let's assume instead of uh, b 
being sold for uh, $140 per hundred weight at 805 pounds. Let's assume the price falls from 140 to 125. So we're going to hold everything else equal. We're just going to take the price down from 140 to 125. You can see here, if you look in the lower right-hand corner of both of these tables side by side, so the one on the left is our initial assumption, the, the, the scenario I showed before, and the, one, the table on the right shows the returns if we go from $140 per hundred weight to $125, and you can see we go from a profit of 70, almost $77, $76.81 to be exact, uh, profit, to a loss of almost forty dollars per head, thirty nine eleven. So just, and we've seen, you know, we've all seen prices decline by ten, twelve, fifteen dollars per hundred weight. That can happen, especially over the course of a hundred days. It's 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 taken a lot less than that in the past before to fall that far. And you can see that's that's you know quite a swing. That's well over a hundred dollar swing. You go from a seventy, almost seventy seven dollar profit to nearly a forty dollar loss. That's 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 quite considerable. So I just wanted to. This just illustrates how sensitive this whole process is to uh, the the future price of of calves. All right. Now here's the next uh, the next illustration, and this we're going to take the same assumptions as before. This 525 pound to 805 pound steer, we're feeding towards a 2.8 pound average daily gain. But in this case, we're going to assume we only achieve two pounds instead of 2.8 due to weather or illness or whatever the case may be. And again, this one on this table on the left shows our return to labor and, and management of that almost $77 per head, 76.81. And in this case, by not getting that 0.8 pound and getting two instead of 2.8 on average, our profits fall from 70, almost $77 a head down to $19 a head. So this, this keeps those higher prices, that $140. But our days on feed in order to achieve 805 pounds goes up by 40 days. All right, so you can look at it two ways. In this case, I took the assumption that I'm going to keep feeding them until they hit 805 pounds one way or another. And those extra days on feed really eats into my profit margin, and I wind up at $19.31 because I had to keep them for almost five, a little over five weeks longer than I'd originally anticipated to hit that 805 pounds. Um, it could, it could be, you know, you might sell them early, earlier, and they don't hit the 805 pounds. Maybe it's closer to 700. But again, you're going to see a loss in that case because you fed them as if they're going to achieve 2.8 pounds, but they only achieved two. So not as sensitive in this case as uh, uh, the uh, price uh, price drop in the in the market price for for calves, but still a substantial impact on net returns. And again, this is also sensitive to feed costs, right? If feed costs had been really high in our scenario um, relative to to cattle prices, then this would have a much larger impact on overall revenues, overall returns. But as it stands right now, uh, the futures price is more impactful. And then just a kind of a final sensitivity scenario, we're going to uh, assume a 25% increase in feed costs. So the same as before, 525 weight steers up to 800 and uh, five pound steers, 2.8 pound average daily gain. But let's assume that there's uh, pretty shortly a 25% increase in feed costs. In that case, we go from $77 per head to $53.06 per head in, in, in total profit or returns to labor and management. So I kind of showed it in order in terms of impact and the biggest mover, again, is going to be that futures price or that market price of, uh, of, of cattle. What you pay, what you charge yourself in opportunity costs or lost in opportunity costs versus what you're able to sell the animal for being the most impactful. Um, then those average daily gains being extremely important. And then feed costs having an impact uh, it, should they move one way or another having a, a fairly a considerable impact you know we're talking about uh, over over twenty dollars a head here so those are important things to consider and you know one of the one of the big things here is that, that to be thought about given how high the uh, how large the impact is of 
the the sales price, the final price of that calf that you sell, taking on some of these risk management tools like uh, LRP or something like that, or working with perhaps one of your lenders to to package some sort of futures contract or something like that, locking in some of these profits when you see just how how impactful that final sales price per hundred weight is on the animals that you're feeding. So again, some just some final comments and takeaways. Uh, retaining animals under the current market and current prices given current feed costs uh, makes financial sense right now. And again, a lot of a lot of assumptions are being made in terms of your ability, what, what you're going to get for those those calves once you finally sell them and the prices of feed. But so far at this at this moment, from the way things look right now, um, retaining weaned animals and feeding them out make, makes a lot of financial sense. And a lot of that's because cattle feeders are paying a premium for animals that farmers and ranchers have already put weight on for them. That's really what it amounts to. Yes, there's some lower feed costs right now, but the slide between heavier weight and lightweight animals just is not, it's just not as big as it has been in the past. Um, and again, money can be made by narrowing uh, that price between heifers and steers by by feeding uh, heifers out. The relative relative price per hundred weight on steers or uh, heifers looks a lot better relative to steers. The heavier that they get, um, and again the risk of that market price market price reductions being the largest risk that you're really going to take on in this case, um, simply because it has the largest impact on overall profitability. And again, and finally, it's important to hit those daily rates again, because even a slight increase in feed uh, because of, uh, you know, a higher ration having to be fed is not as not quite as important as hitting your average daily rate again um, target. Well, I want to thank everyone for watching. <clears throat> I hope uh, hope you found that this presentation to be informative. I have my information here on this final slide. If there, anyone has any questions or comments, uh, feel free to email me or there's my office number there. Thanks again for watching. I, I hope that uh, you guys are able to take something out of this and uh, going forward able to make a little bit more money. Thanks.